How underwater structures are made. Dewatering with caissons. Caissons are large, watertight structures used in civil engineering to perform a variety of underwater construction tasks, including creating bridge piers, tunnel foundations, and other structures. They operate on the principle of displacing water through controlled air pressure, allowing workers to work in dry conditions below the waterline. Caissons are usually round or rectangular structures made from steel or concrete. They are meant to keep water out, but they have an open top for workers and machinery to get in. The caisson is placed at the desired location on the seabed or riverbed, often with the help of additional weights or ballast to ensure stability. The caisson is partially submerged in water. This allows water to enter the caisson, and its internal air pressure is initially equal to the external water pressure. Workers enter the caisson through the open top and begin excavation work on the floor of the caisson. They may use compressed air or other equipment to maintain breathable air within the caisson. Excavation work takes place inside the caisson to remove soil or sediment from the seabed. Workers may use equipment like dredgers, airlocks or conveyors to transport the excavated material to the surface. To maintain a breathable atmosphere within the caisson, compressed air is continuously supplied. Airlocks are used to allow workers to enter and exit the caisson without allowing water to flood in. As the excavation deepens and the caisson descends further into the water, Waterproofing measures such as sealing grouts or mud mats may be applied to the base of the caisson to prevent water ingress. The caisson continues to be filled with ballast materials as excavation progresses. This increases its weight and sinks it further into the seabed until it reaches the desired depth. Once the caisson is at the desired depth, the construction of the underwater structure, such as a bridge pier or tunnel foundation, can begin. Reinforcements and concrete are added to create the foundation or structure. After construction is finished, the caisson is deballasted by removing the weights used for sinking it. Caissons offer a controlled dry environment for construction in challenging underwater conditions. However, their deployment presents several risks and challenges, both for workers and the overall project. These include decompression sickness, barotrauma, toxic air exposure, collapse and flood risks, alongside plenty of other hazards. That's part of the reason why caissons have been replaced by other methods like drilled shafts. Dewatering through cofferdams and other methods. Dewatering is a vital process that involves the removal of groundwater or surface water from a construction site. It is crucial for creating a dry and stable working environment for various construction activities, including excavation, foundation work, tunneling, and more. One essential component of this process is the use of cofferdams, which act as temporary enclosures or barriers to keep water out of specific areas, allowing construction work to proceed in a dry environment. Here's how they work. Prior to commencing dewatering, a comprehensive site assessment is conducted to determine the water table's depth, the quality of the water, the required dewatering method, and any potential environmental or regulatory concerns. Dewatering methods are chosen based on site conditions. Common methods include well points, deep wells, sumps and pumps, and horizontal drains. But now, cofferdams are preferred because of their effectiveness and simple physics. How cofferdams work. There are two main kinds of cofferdams, cellular ones and single-walled ones. Cellular cofferdams have many connected sections and are good for deep waters. Single-walled cofferdams are used in shallower areas and can be made of materials like steel or concrete. The construction of a cofferdam involves clearing the area, installing a cut-off trench to prevent water seepage, placing sheet piles or constructing the wall structure, dewatering the area and conducting construction work within the dry enclosure. The materials for cofferdams depend on the project's requirements, with sheet piles commonly made of steel and walls constructed from concrete, timber or other suitable materials. Design factors include water depth, soil conditions, and hydrostatic pressure. Proper disposal of water removed during dewatering is essential. 
following local environmental regulations. Treatment may be required if the water is contaminated. Pumps are used to draw groundwater from the ground, or sumps, and then transport it to a suitable location for disposal. Continuous monitoring of the dewatering system is essential to ensure its effectiveness and prevent overpumping, which could lead to ground settlement or environmental issues. Regular maintenance, including cleaning screens, replacing pumps, and adjusting well point depths, is crucial. Dewatering can cause ground settlement, which may need to be addressed through grouting or other stabilization methods to prevent damage to nearby structures or the construction site itself. Safety precautions, including fall protection, proper equipment operation, and monitoring of gas concentrations must be in place to protect the health and safety of workers. The inclusion of cofferdams is particularly important in aquatic or waterfront construction, where they act as temporary barriers to create controlled dry workspaces. Drilled shafts. Drilled shafts, also known as drilled piers, drilled caissons, or borehole foundations, are deep foundation elements used in construction to support structures such as buildings, bridges, and other heavy loads. These cylindrical or non-cylindrical reinforced concrete or steel structures are constructed by drilling into the ground and are typically used when shallow foundations, such as spread footings, are inadequate for bearing the loads. Here's a detailed explanation of drill shafts. The process begins with a thorough site investigation, including geotechnical studies to assess the soil and subsurface conditions. Engineers then design the drilled shafts, considering factors like the load requirements, soil properties, depth, and any lateral support needed. Drilled shafts can be made in two ways, wet or dry. The method used depends on the ground conditions. Wet drilling uses mud to stabilize the hole, while dry drilling uses augers or tools to remove soil. Wet drilling involves the use of drilling mud to stabilize the borehole, while dry drilling relies on augers or other tools to remove soil. In some cases, temporary casing is inserted into the hole to prevent the sides of the shaft from collapsing during drilling. This casing is gradually removed as the shaft is deepened and concrete is placed. As the drilling progresses, excavated soil or rock, known as spoil, is removed from the borehole to create a void for the concrete. Steel reinforcement cages, often made of reinforcing bars, rebar, are inserted into the freshly drilled shaft. The rebar cage is positioned according to the design specifications and secured in place to provide structural integrity and load-bearing capacity. In some cases, Grout is injected into the annular space between the borehole and the reinforcement cage to improve the shaft's load-bearing capacity and ensure a secure bond between the concrete and the surrounding soil. High-quality concrete is poured into the shaft from the bottom to the top, displacing any remaining drilling fluid or grout. The concrete is typically of a specified strength and its quality is closely monitored during placement. The concrete is allowed to cure and harden, which may take several days. Proper curing is critical for the development of the concrete's strength. Various tests are conducted to ensure the drilled shaft meets the design specifications. The exterior and interior of the shaft are inspected for any defects, such as cracks or voids, that could affect the structural integrity. The top of the drilled shaft is connected to the superstructure, which could be a building, bridge column, or other load-bearing element. This connection is typically achieved through the use of a cap, pile cap, or footing. Drilled shafts offer several advantages, including the ability to support heavy loads, penetrate deep into stable soil or rock layers, and minimize settlement. However, they require skilled engineers, quality construction, and rigorous quality control to ensure their performance. After the base has been laid down underwater, the rest of the process has very few limitations. The foundation work might last from several months to a few years, but the remaining project phases could finish earlier than expected. These structures are carefully engineered to endure harsh weather conditions. And that's all for today's video. See you next time.